Hi, I'm Nana, your host. Welcome back to another episode of the Cut Creative Class. I'm thrilled to be here with singer and actor Condola Rashad. Can you tell us about how you came into the role of Billions and how has that experience been like for you? It's really fun to get to play a character that's very much not like me at all. Because <laughs> I, don't, I don't dress anything like her. I don't act anything like her. She's so very serious, you know. That's every actor's dream. That's what we really want as actors, right? We don't want to have to end up playing ourselves. You want to play someone who's really, really opposite from you. That's more fun. What does the typical creative process look like for you? Um, so I would say typically for me, the music often comes first. It's very rare for me to actually sit down and write an entire song and just say, oh, okay, I'm gonna sit down, I'm gonna write a song about this. That's, that's often not how it works for me, because then I end up overthinking it. So often what'll happen is the music will come to me naturally. And then the music, I, I like to say, the music often will inform me what it wants to be about. Tell me about the song Blue. That's your most popular song on the EP. Everyone's blasting that. I played it about three times on repeat. Tell me a little bit about that song and what inspired you to create that. Um, you know, it's really funny. That song came quite naturally. Um, when we were in the studio, it was me, Lord Quest, and, and Alex, said Alex. These are the, the two other collaborators that I worked with. Quest had actually created the, for the most part, the instrumental part of that, minus the strings. Um, so he kind of just put that on and I was like, yeah, that one. And then all of a sudden, we projected images of Positano on the wall and made the room blue. And that's where that song, like literally the lyrics just came and we just went with it. And the next thing we knew we had this song. So it's funny, the way that I write music is not always as structured as you might think. So I didn't sit down and say, okay, I'm gonna write a song called Blue and I'm gonna write about this. That song just happened naturally because of the environment. And then the, you know, so sometimes my music comes that way. It's not always as, uh, as thought out. My music is, as you've seen, very theatrical. And it, you can't really pin it into any genre, really, because it doesn't really belong in any genre. I was met with hesitant. Like, people were very hesitant because, oh, I don't know if people are gonna get that. I don't know if that's hooky enough or if that's simple enough. And I kind of had to just stand by my artistry and say, well, no, but this is, this is me. As an artist, this is me in my purest form of authenticity. So I do believe people will, it will resonate with people because of its authenticity. This is the music that comes from me. So I think the challenge is being true to your artistry. There's the art, there's the work, and then there's the industry. They're not really the same thing. It's okay to take in what people are telling you that have been in the business for many years, but you can't lose what makes you, you. You can't lose your own voice or else what's the point in doing it? So my challenge with my music was trusting that my music would be would, would would fall on the ears that it was meant to. What have you been up to during quarantine? I really feel like this time for me has been about allowing myself to restore and allowing myself to actually pause and reflect and just be a little bit more. I think that what got me through was like, I actually continued to get dressed. Like well, even during the strictest part of the quarantine, I dressed for myself. I dressed like, you know, I just dressed to show up for myself. And that actually allowed me to feel better. You have to just go with the flow. You know, you can't force yourself, but you also don't want to shut yourself down. It's really just about staying open to the possibility and tricky as it is right now, trying to stay open to as many new possibilities, new experiences as you possibly can. During the quarantine is when I realized that, you know, I think especially in this, um, as artists for one, but also in this industry that we're, that a lot of, you know, all of us are in, I, I feel that there's this constant pressure or need to always be doing something or always be creating something, always putting something out. And um, it's not actually super helpful to live that way. I think this time has really been spent for me really kind of coming back to myself and really coming back to nature and really kind of just reevaluating the things that are important to me. So you work closely with Breaking Walls. Can you tell us some of the projects you've been working on with them? This is an amazing organization that, that brings these young people together. They're all young artists from all over the world and basically it creates a platform for them to build their voices and also to cultivate themselves to be tomorrow's leaders. It takes a lot of courage to be able to just step out there and, and, and put your work, you know, on, and they're very, a lot of them are quite young, you know. 
Like, what do you think theater is gonna look like now, right, or in the future? How is it changing uh, because of technology, because of the pandemic, just all those types of different. Because of this pause that we've had to have, when we come back, we're about to come back so strong. It's gonna be a huge renaissance when it comes back. So right now it's about cultivating so that when it's time to go back and do something live, we've used this time so that we're ready. What advice do you give to young black women who are interested in acting and interested in theater? What would you say to them right now? Know yourself. Know yourself. If you know yourself, then nobody else can lead you astray about yourself. <laughs> A lot of the time people think that they need to keep up. There's this, always this mentality of having to keep up, having to keep up, and it's like, no, 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 keep up with yourself, you know? Keep up with yourself. And I think if, when you have that sense of yourself, then you're never driven crazy by all the noise. The work is in the center. There's a lot of noise that surrounds the work often. <laughs> so it's really about just staying centered in the work. It's a give and take with life, you know? I don't, I don't, there's, there's really nothing that doesn't inspire me, even, even heartbreak, even things that are uncomfortable. Everything is inspiring to me.